This is an assembly model of a housing that comprises of three separate parts. The external surfaces of the three parts blend nicely into each other to form a single coherent design. If we were to design each of these three parts individually, it would take an enormous effort to ensure that the surfaces blend into each other nicely. In the event that we need to make changes to one of the parts, we will need to adjust the other parts manually. So modeling this assembly on a part-by-part -part basis is clearly not the answer here. In this tutorial, we will take a look at the master model technique. When we talk about the master model technique, we are not talking about any particular feature in SOLIDWORKS. Rather, it is a top-down workflow in computer-aided design that many designers adopt. We start by modeling the entire assembly as though it is a single part file. This is what is commonly called the master model. Essentially, this is what you will get if all three parts are fused together into one single part. During the modeling of this single part, we do not need to be concerned with how to split the part, but rather we can focus on getting the overall shape right. So what I am showing you here is the master model that I have created previously. I'm just going to quickly cycle through the steps to give you an idea of how I have created this part. At this stage, if you look at the solid bodies folder, you can confirm that this is a single solid. To split the part, I'm going to make use of this plane and this sketch line. Let's roll down to the point after the splits have been done. With the plane, I can split out the top cover with the sketch, we can create this body at the corner. So we have a total of three separate bodies. It is always a good practice to name them. At this point, the master model is complete. The next step is to bring each of these three bodies out as individual part files so that we can perform further refining operations. So there are three ways that you can do this. The first is to expand the solid bodies folder. Right-click on an individual body and click on Insert into a new part. When you click OK, you are immediately brought into the new part file with the body, and you will be prompted to create a new name for the file. If you look at the feature tree, you will see an arrow, indicating that this part has an external reference, which would be the master model in this case. Repeat the same process for the next two parts. From here, you can perform secondary operations like shelling, adding ribs, or adding bosses to the part. Now the second method is to right-click on the solid bodies folder and pick on Save Bodies. Check on all three parts. In this case, we still want to be able to see the bodies in the master model, so we would uncheck the Consume Cut Bodies option. We also have the option of creating an assembly with the three bodies assembled as components. Click on Browse, choose a location for the assembly and enter a new name for the assembly. Once you hit OK, SOLIDWORKS creates three part files and opens up the assembly with the three bodies in place. Go back to the master model and you will notice that there is actually a save body step in the feature tree. Any additional features created after this step will not get propagated to the three part files. The third method sometimes gets confused with the first method because of the naming. Although they sound identical, these are completely different operations. First create a new part. Go to Insert, Part. Locate the master model. You have the option of importing features on the master model such as reference geometry and most importantly, sketches. Because of the ability to import sketches, in my book, 
this is the best way of using the master model. Do not click on the graphics area to place a model. Instead, click OK to align the master model origin with the new part origin. If you expand the feature, you will see that you have access to any reference geometry or sketches created in the master model. In this case, I want to start working on refining the top cover. The first thing to do typically will be to delete the unwanted bodies. Start the delete keep body function. And select the top cover to keep. From this point on, you can start to shell the part and fill in the details. You can add embosses, ribs, create lips and grooves, just to name a few. We will proceed to do the same for the other two parts. Anything that you do here on this derived part does not flow back upstream to the master model. However, the converse is not true. This is where the power of the master model workflow comes in. If you want to make changes to the external surface of the part, you can go back to the master model. We will roll back to the point before the split and create an extrusion on this face of the model. You can see that this extrusion straddles the split line. Let's take a look at the derived parts after regeneration. This is the top cover, and this is the main body. You can see that both parts have been updated with a new geometry. Going back to the master model, we can also make changes to the way the parts are split. Let's open up the sketch that created the corner portion and make some adjustments. Let's regenerate and look at the main body and corner again. You can see that both parts have been updated accordingly and the faces match up perfectly. This workflow allows you to use a master model as a main driver without having to worry about mismatching between the different derived bodies. Take note that this behavior also applies for the first two methods that I have demonstrated earlier. Now for this third method, we are not given the option to automatically create an assembly. So start a new assembly file and import the top cover. We shall place this part by clicking on the confirmation mark instead of in the graphics area. This will ensure that the assembly origin coincides with the part origin, which of course is the same origin as the master model. Repeat the same process for the subsequent parts. You can see that the parts will line themselves up perfectly with no maze required. 